Hi everybody and welcome to month three of the Barn Star Sampler Sub Along and these are two of my blocks from month one and month two and I'm loving starting to see them together. I've got two more uh, already done as well and I'm going to start having to put them out on my design floor. Um, this little design wall is not quite big enough so looking forward to start seeing uh, everybody starting to put their blocks up so that we can see multiple blocks together. So uh, month three is the Carpenter Star. So I'm going to start working on pulling my fabrics for that one and showing you what my thoughts are for, for the fabrics and then start to show you some tips and tricks on how to make the different components so we have some fantastic blocks coming out. So join me. So I've started to pull out some fabrics for um, month three, the Carpenter Star. And let me just have a quick look. So the Carpenter Star is this one here in the lovely blues and well, aquas and greens um, on the cover quilt. So I'm going to do one of my blocks in these purples and pinks because I just couldn't resist. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. So in, in this block, the center square and a square is kind of just plain and sort of more of a backgroundy kind of fabric. I'm going to take the opportunity to use another one of these gorgeous Chula Owls. I couldn't resist. So that was sort of my starting point again in terms of the colors. So I'm going to put that into that center square. Um, the surrounding star points are going to be in this kind of freaky um, purpley color. And it, it looks a bit psychedelic, this fabric. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens when I cut it up into small bits, but I love those colors. So that's going to be those star points. The background, the backgroundy sort of colors, uh, fabric around those star points is gonna be this gorgeous little purple geo, sort of backgroundy, but it's got all the little colors and, and stuff. I think that's a cute little print. And then my three outer um, prints, so this greeny sort of yellow color, the darker greens and the lighter greens are going to be these three, so I'm going to use this stunning little print with the, the cute little dandelion hedgehog on it as my corner one. This is going to be that real pop of colour that's the green in her, her um, block, but I'm going to have this fantastic pinky with a spot of bright pink and then the bear print for my um, big triangles at the top. So I think that's going to look pretty stunning. And for my second Carpenter Star block, I'm going to go with my greens and minty sort of colors. And I've been hanging out to use this print. I can't believe how cute this little chip monkey squirrel kind of thing is. Um, so again, I'm going to put something in my center square in a square and I'm going to do a bit of fussy cutting and select that pop of pink of the Mad Hatter's hat. Um, the star points around that center are going to be in this green um, geo print. The background print is going to be the very pale pink geo um, pattern. And then for those three corner um, sections where we've got the darker color, this pop, and then the lighter color, I'm going to uh, use this print with the pops of pink in it, as well as those little bits of green, bright yellowy green, and then um, this lovely dragonfly print as well. So I think both of those are going to look really, really pretty. So I better start deciding whether I'm doing flying geese, HSTs. I think there's some quarter square triangles in there as well. Decide which way I'm gonna be doing, what method I'm going to be doing those with as to whether I cut per the pattern or cut for my um, alternative. So let's get to it. So the very first part of the Carpenter Star block that I'm working on is this very center square in a square. 
So as I said, I'm going to sort of fussy cut fabric for that very center bit that's sort of more background and then the four corners of that uh, square and a square. Now there are three ways of doing um, square and a square. Um, you can follow the way the book does, which is um, to cut a big square and to do flip and stitch corners. Um, and that's what I did with my little test piece here. Um, I've got to say, I prefer cutting things oversized and being able to trim them so that you can make sure that you've got a good quarter inch on each of your points. And me just doing this with some, some pretty scrappy fabric, um, the stitch and flip corners have not quite worked out. So this is not actually square and to the exact size. So if you're going to do it by the method in the book, just be really careful and use um, a very scant quarter inch seam. So I'm looking now at two other ways of doing it. And one is fussy cutting um, my center square, which I've done here to get uh, the lovely Mad Hatter's um, hat. Um, and you can cut that center square on point um, because the triangles sides are then going to go oops, go either side to make the square so be careful about your fussy cutting um, or your cutting of that one that it's going to be on point and we can then put them around the sides that's one way of doing it and that's sort of how I normally do things um, that's sort of my standard way but the third method is to use the um, fat quarter shops square and a square foundation um, paper piecing papers and that allows you to again fussy cut on point but to place place your fabric like uh, in the diamond or the it's a square but you know on point like that um, to put your your um, triangles on and then lining things up and sewing on the seams. So I'm going to have a go at doing it this way as well as my normal way because I've discounted doing that option. <laughs> it just wasn't um, perfect enough for my liking. I would have had to take a little bit too much time and effort. So there are your three options for how to do your square in a square. Remembering that if you don't want to do it as per the book, you need to cut things a little bit differently. So here are my three different types of square in a square. So this was done via the method in the book, which was to cut a square the size of the finished um, block and then cut four smaller squares and do flip and stitch corners. Um, this was the block that I did by fussy cutting on the point my center piece and then cutting two squares in half diagonally to get the, the triangles and that is just a little bit over the six and a half so I can can trim that down and get rid of any sort of um, edges that aren't quite perfect but that fits nicely within my six and a half inches um, and the third option was using the Fat Court Shops um, foundation paper piecing and I haven't trimmed yet but that obviously will be perfect because it's um, exactly going to be on the cut line where that's going to be exactly quarter of an inch etc. So uh, as you can see the fabric's um, bigger than even the the, the background sort of square so that one's going to fit nicely within my six and a half and have my perfect quarter of an inches and all that sort of stuff so happy with that one um, and as I said this one did not really turn out particularly well I probably could have um, tweaked and played with that a little bit more but I'm a bit short here a bit short there a bit extra there you know it's it's just a little bit messier so my preference is probably from ease of doing it, this one. Um, but if you want to get then perfect, perfect cut results, this one. And here are my finished trimmed blocks. Uh, loving this one with my little owl in it. Um, so both of these have come out nicely, perfectly at the six and a half inches. Um, with a quarter of an inch seam probably this is a 
better quarter of an inch seam. Some of these were a little bit tighter. Um, so which method do you think you're going to use for your square and a square for this block? So one of the other components in um, this month's block is a quarter square triangle um, where you've got the four triangles that make up your block and two of the fabrics are the same but the other two are different. Now the pattern explains how to cut these triangles and the sizes to cut these triangles um, so that you can just sew the triangles together and then sew these two triangles together and then sew the four of them together. However, I much prefer doing my quarter square triangles as really big HSTs, half square triangles, and then putting them together to get the, the quarter square triangles. So basically what you do is um, make a big HST with one of the fabrics and the, the one that has two of it and then another big HST with the fourth fabric and then the one that's got uh, two pieces in it. So you've got these two big HSTs and um, I press them away from that same fabric because then once you've got those sorted and don't trim them, so just leave them as nice and big um, because we'll trim them at the very end to get our quarter square triangle exactly correct. Then we're going to put the two HSTs together, try and line up the square, and we are then going to probably pop a couple of pins in so that they don't move because we've got those two seams nicely nested against each other. I can feel that well through my fingers, so I put a couple of pins in there, and then we're going to draw a line um, from with my this, uh, this ruler has a little etched line right in the center. So I'm lining that center etched line up with the corners of the square. And then I'm going to mark either side of that, which is the quarter of an inch either side of your center line. So you then come and sew on those two lines and then cut down the center. And we have our quarter square triangle. So from two, um, from two of the HSTs, like we just had there, you get two quarter square triangles. So you need to start off with um, one big square of the green, one big square of your second pattern, and then two big squares of the one that's duplicated. Um, and that then gives you four big HSTs and four quarter square triangles when you're done. So that I find is a much, much easier way to do it. And oh, by the way, then, then we come and trim to whatever the exact size is that the pattern says. Um, and that allows us to, to make them quite easily. Your points nest nice and simply. So that's the way I'm gonna do my uh, quarter square triangles. And here we have my four side units for this month's block. Um, which is made up of that flying geese block and our quarter square triangle block. And oh, I'm thinking they look pretty cool. Um, the very psychedelic uh, print, it doesn't look too bad when it's um, chopped up into the little pieces. So. Now we're starting to work on the corner units. And so I've cut out all my pieces um, with all the different colors and uh, get started on creating that uh, cute little corner unit. It's gonna have this fantastic pop of pink in it. And this is the corner unit for this month's block. And I'm loving how my cute little um, hedgehogs just pop up in little, little spots on this one. So I've um, made my four blocks of those and the only spot to really um, be a bit wary of is when you're just matching these points. So, you know, you're doing your flip and stitch corners on either side of this um, bright, bright color. Um, and obviously you want those points to match. So I just pinned really well to make sure that they came up as well as I could. And oh, I think they're gonna look fantastic. And so when I was doing my, um, flip and stitch corners, I also 
marked an extra half an inch away and so I've got all these bonus HSTs that I will trim at some point um, of both the darker colour with my, my bright as well as the bright and my background so always like having some extra HSTs when I can so there we go that's the, the corner um, block and this doesn't even fit in my camera shot but this is my side units my center unit and my quarters uh, corner units all ready to sew together but i'll show you what that looks like when we get to the end of this month but i hope you have fun making the block three the carpenter star